Hey everybody, what's up today? Today, we're doing another car stereo install. We have a nice little Honda Civic. Stick around, show you what we have going. Hey everybody, thanks for sticking around. As you just saw, we have a 2010 Honda Civic in the house today for an audio upgrade. We're going to be changing out the CD player, front and rear speakers. I'll show you what we have going in for the CD player here. We have the Kenwood DPX505BT. Now this here, it is a CD player. It does have, uh, it's got your Bluetooth, Sirius XM radio, dual phone connection, uh, steering wheel controls has your RCA outputs, your front and rear and sub has mic for your Bluetooth that's the connector for your uh, Sears XM it has Alexa built into it and it's made for the iPhones, iPods so you can control them it has a front mounted uh, USB plug as well so you can listen to music through the USB port That'll be connected to the Crux SWR HN-62B and that's just to keep the steering wheel controls working and a few other little things like that just to make it work like the factory. Then you have your antenna adapter, steering wheel harness, harness from the radio, harness from the Crux module and then we have the Metro dash kit way over here which is your 997816G and the G stands for gunmetal so we're gonna get things wired up take the factory radio out get the new one put in and continue on from there so stick around here we go alright as you can see we've got this radio all wired up we've got the harness hooked up Everything for the steering wheel controls, the antenna adapter, the module here. Always make sure you can keep those uh, dip switches in sight. Because if you happen to knock one out of the way, or where it's not supposed to be uh, during the install, and if you tape over it, you'll never, you'll be trying to troubleshoot what's going on with it. So, looking at this, you have this side is the aftermarket radio side and then the other side is your uh, steering wheel settings so in this one here it's for a, a Honda so you have the first two are on the third one is off and then for the radio type this is a Kenwood and according to the instructions, all three are supposed to be on. So, when you get it, look at that nice instruction piece of paper. It'll tell you where all the switches go, what's what, how to do it, wire it up, and away you go. So now, we're going to go take the radio over to the car. So here we go. Alright, so here we are in the car. I got lucky, and somebody's been in here before. From the factory, to take the radio out, you need to go up underneath the factory radio in this little compartment in here. There's a little panel that covers at the very top, and then up on the inside you have two screws, or nuts, they take both, and they need to come out before you can take the radio out. I've seen a lot of cars, they'll put the radio back in, and they won't put the screws back in because they're a pain in the nuts to take out if you don't have the right tools. So, with that, I looked up there, no screws. So that makes my life a little bit nicer. I mean, I've got the tools to take them out, but that much less I gotta worry about. So, to take out the radio, first, you gotta take out the knee plate here, which opens up a Phillips head screw here. Which now, I can take off this whole front panel. 
So I'm gonna mount the camera over here and show you. You can see how I'm already moving the whole radio, and I haven't even attempted to move it yet. There. So that just pops off of there. You can see where the screw was here on the bottom. And then you have one electrical connector on the back here for this vehicle. If it was a higher end vehicle, there is more connections there. And uh, you'd have a couple more connectors disconnect. But like I said, for this vehicle, there's only the one. I've already made sure there's no CD in there. Because once you take it out, if you don't have the CD out, you may have to plug things back in to get it out. So now, you just reach in back, undo all the electrical connections. And there's a factory radio. And right here is where you would have the two screws that go in from underneath and they come right up through here. Like I said, they weren't there, so we don't need to worry about them. But uh, if the car hadn't been touched, they would have been there. So now we're going to go take this apart and get the dash kit ready. So here we go. All right, so here we are. Like I said, we have the Metra dash kit, the 997816G. As you can see, it is just a basic dash kit. And it pretty much matches the colors. However, we have a lot of things to uh, switch over. So, we should start. You got to move all the connectors over from all the HVAC controls to the hazard switch, to even the vent. And they're all done with the, the Phillips head screw. And all you do is you just take it from one, move it over to the other, make sure everything is still lined up where it needs to be. And then when it gets tightened down, make sure it still functions, doesn't stick. And uh, then we can keep moving on. So I'm going to put this in to make it look like I'm actually working super fast here. And we're going to switch these over. Alright, as you just saw, I switched everything over. We got these uh, control dial covers. They just snap back on. They pop off very easily. Get them lined up to where they need to go. Give them a test, put them back where they, how they go, and away we are. As you can see, I've already tested all those. Buttons go in, come back out. Now, the one thing that you have to remember to do, all these clips, they gotta be transferred over too. So we're gonna get that done, and then we'll be able to be ready to put the car, put the radio back in the car. The white clips, they come off just 
real easily. Give them a little pull, spread them apart a little bit, and off they go. The metal ones, they take a little bit more effort, but still the same basic idea. And just pull off, snap in place. Sometimes they'll snap away from you. But always take note which way they come off. You put them back on backwards, they may not work the, quite like you want them to. So I'm going to finish these up and I'll see you back in the car. Alrighty, we are back in the car. As you can see, we have the radio mounted. I uh, got it all secured in there with all the mounts it needs. So now we're going to start plugging everything in. Make sure everything works. We still have the, the Bluetooth microphone to be wired in. So I'm not going to actually set it completely in place yet. Put that in there. See, all those work. Heater works. Four ways work. Radio. We have sound. So that all works. So now we are on CJLS, which is our local radio station. We shut it down. Turn it back on. It should still be on CJLS. Goes to radio, and there it is. So now, we run the Bluetooth microphone, put the dash back together, we can start on the speakers. So I'm going to get doing that. And I'll show you when we're done. Alright, so there we have it. The radio's back in. Dash is back together. It's just the exact opposite of when you take it out. You put the, the dash piece in, lock it in place with all the screw, all the locking tabs. Put this piece back in. Don't forget your electrical connector in that left side. Don't forget your screw that holds it all in there, and uh, it's done. So now, we're going to start on the door speakers. We're going to get them taken apart, and that taken apart. Let's see if we can't make this sound a little bit better. It already sounds better than it did, but I do hear a rattle in the passenger driver's door, or passenger front door, and uh, sounds like the speaker's not the greatest, so... We're going to pull these out, get them changed, and uh, stick along for the ride. Here we go. Alright, so here we are with the driver's door. You have one cover that goes in behind the, the door handle. Then you have this window switch panel. It has to come from the back and then slide towards the back of the car. Because there's this little tab here that goes underneath the front side. And then... Push in on the tabs, like that. And there we have it. And there you can see this piece here goes underneath the front 
So you have to lift up from the back and then pull it back a little bit. It's a bit of a pain, but it's not hard. And that open shows you a Phillips head screw behind the handle. And then you, like we just showed you, you have one behind the door handle itself. And now, take your popper tool, and work your way around. Go, go somewhat gentle with it, but yet at the same time, you got to use a little, little effort. And as I just saw, there's a little push button block right behind where the door handle is. One of those, you push the center in. And then the door panel itself comes off. And the door locks cables are locked in there. There. You can see, let's turn this right around. You can see it has a little fold down tab, it has a little locking tab here, and it gets stuck underneath this panel here. Once you get past that, it comes right out, and you're good to go. So now we can look at our wonderful factory speaker down there, which all kinds of good stuff on it. So we're gonna get that changed out and uh, make it sound better. So here we go. All right, so we have the factory speaker out and it's just a nice cheap plastic speaker. Nothing real fancy about it. All one piece. What we're putting in is Arc Audio, the X602. It's a two-way coax speaker. Magnet size is much better. You have your tweeter, which is going to help with the highs nicely. So, we have our bracket here, which is the 82-7805. That's going to fit right in there nicely. The speaker already has some foam on the back side of it. So I won't need to put any on this side of the speaker. I will put some on this side to keep it from rattling against the door. And uh, a little strip right along the front, just so that way it mimics right here. So we're going to get this switched over, get it mounted, and show you what we do. Here we go. All right, we're back. As you can see, we have the speaker mounted. I'm just putting some foam strips around the edge uh, normally you could run a larger like your uh, fast rings for example but uh, I didn't have the space on this one it's only a little a little opening and I actually even had to uh, trim the plastic back on the inside a little bit just to just so it would actually clear the speaker I don't want to 
going to stick too well for me today. But we have the foam for the back of the, the speaker adapter. There's the foam that came from the factory on the back of the speaker itself. And now we have the foam between the door speaker and the door panel. So that should help with all the sound reproduction possible for these speakers. And there we have it. So now we're going to put the door panel back on, test them out, see what they sound like, and move on to the next door. All right, here we are, getting the passenger size speaker ready. As you can see, we've got our harness, we've got the speaker. So now, we're going to get some heat shrink ready for this, and solder some wires on. Red for positive, black for negative, as per normal. And there we have it. Put the heat shrink down over like that. And we have a nice waterproof connection. And then we'll move that heat shrink over and uh, finish off this connection and have it ready to go in the car. See you in the car. All right, here we are in the car getting ready to finish up the front doors but we've got to check something first we gotta make sure everything's wired correctly so we have our polarity tester now as you can hear there's a popping sound in the back or the background so what we do we take this put it next to the speaker and you can see this flashing green and this is good we come over to this side it's flashing green. 
which means both speakers for the front are in polarity with each other, which means I could put this door back together and start working on the rear speakers. And once we're done with them, we'll double check those, make sure they're good, and uh, then we'll be done for the day. So stick around, show you how to take the back apart. All right, here we are. We're in the back of the car. Honda was really nice to us on this one. This particular one, you'll notice this grill comes up from the outside of the car, goes up and pulls out. Yeah, little locking tabs that go underneath the inside panel. And that shows us our wonderful paper cone speaker. So now I'm gonna go get the screwdriver, take that out. I've got a nice angle bit driver that's gonna be perfect for it. So we'll be right back. All right, so like I said, I've got a nice angle driver. That goes there. Pulls that screw right out. And just like all the others, break off the seal that's in there. Undo the connector and your speaker is out. It's exact same as the front. Kind of a really cheaply made piece, but uh, we're gonna make it look better. Stick around. Okay, here we are getting ready to put the speaker itself back in. As you can see, we've got the harness on it, wired up. That way it's a direct plug and play. Drop the speaker in and we're gonna tighten it down. Snug it up with some screws. See if we can't make this sound a little nicer. And just like that, we have a much better looking speaker in there. Now let's see if this still fits. Which it doesn't, so we just gotta trim off some of the, the baffling in the back. So we're gonna do that, get it back on, and then we're gonna start on the other side. All right, just like I had said on the other video, or for the other side, this panel here comes out. So we're gonna take our little panel tool and just kind of gently work our way around, getting to the point where it starts to pop up and out it goes, just like that. Makes this job so much nicer, so much easier. And now we're just gonna pop out that speaker, do the same thing we did to the other side, and uh, then we'll show you the final results. So stick around. All right, so we are finished with this car. As you saw, we just did the radio and the door speakers with the CD player in this 2010 Honda Civic. So here's the finished on the radio. Everything's all fit back in there, back where it belongs. All the buttons work fine. We got the Bluetooth mic up there. I know some may kind of question it there. I like to put it there because it's easy for the driver to talk into and you don't have the wind circulating around from the window. 
and sometimes you just don't have enough wire to put it in the middle of the, the, the roof of the car. So I like to put it there. It's nice, easy, accessible for the driver. I'm not worried about the passenger at all. Uh, that way they can talk on it, no issues. The doors, they're back together. As you saw, the speakers are mounted up with the, the brackets, wired in with the harness. The rears, same thing, got that all back together. You saw, use the, the brackets, the wire harnesses on them as well. And all I'm doing now, taking all the factory stuff, putting them in the boxes, and giving all the factory stuff back to the customer. I've got no need for it, and if they ever want to go back, put it back into factory to sell the car, they can do that very easily because everything's all plug and play, no cut wires, no issues. So it makes it that much easier and more user friendly if they have to ever service the vehicle. But uh, in the meantime, they're going to be able to enjoy this sound. The sound systems, it's a huge upgrade over what the factory was. It's a lot clearer, a lot cleaner sound. And uh, overall, it's just better. Those ARC audio speakers are, are really great on their sound. And back to the Kenwood CD player, you can't beat it. Not for just a factory upgrade like this. So with that, I'm going to call this one done. I'm going to let the customer know it's finished and go on to the next job. I've got some more stuff coming. I've got some more powder coating coming. We've got this little dirty looking box right there. If you know what that is, let me know. Drop a comment. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It goes with the set of valve covers I did up the other day. There is a video of the those valve covers as well already posted. If you want to take a jump over, check that out under the powder coating. This here, that little aluminum dirty looking box. That makes a nice wine inside that car. So stick around, click that subscribe button, drop a like, drop a comment, let me know what you think. So till next time, remember to stay warm and keep it loud.